Hey everybody, it's Mr. Hefner. And today we're not gonna be talking about literature. Instead, we're going to talk about a really cool tool that you have on your school laptop called EndNote. Now EndNote is a tool for helping you to document your research. It means giving credit to the sources uh, that you use in order to build uh, a research paper, or in our case, uh, just simply a Friday essay. This is important because you wanna avoid plagiarism by always giving credit uh, to whoever owns the ideas that you might be borrowing. Uh, even, even if you give credit in text by mentioning the author and the title, you'll want to make sure that in a works cited section at the end of the paper, you'll include uh, links to the original sources. Now, in the past with other teachers starting probably all the way back in middle school, you've been using Noodle Tools. And Noodle Tools is a fine scholastic tool. I have nothing against that. There are some others like EasyBib that are out there. Sometimes you can subscribe to the premium version. Sometimes the free version helps you uh, with a quick citation. But I just wanted to let you know that this tool called EndNote, most schools do not have it available. We got a special deal uh, to provide this here. It is the professional version of something like Noodle Tools. In fact, uh, you might remember that in, in your humanities courses, you're generally asked to, to document your research in MLA style format. That's modern language association style format. But in a science class, you might be asked to use APA format, American Psychological Association format. The reality is there are three or four main research types, but as a professional writer, you might write for a particular magazine or a particular newspaper, or you might be at a certain university. And many times these various corporations and organizations have their own style guide. EndNote can help you write for a thousand different style guides. And it's pretty cool. And it knows what to do. And it does a lot of the work for you, which is super cool. Now, why does this matter for us? Why, do, why am I so concerned all of a sudden for Friday essays that you're documenting your sources? Well, up to this point, I've given you the source essay. There's no need when you and I are working together on something for you to document the source that I gave you. It's understood that you use that source. But now starting today, starting this Friday anyway, uh, you're able to choose any source essay uh, that you really want. You find your topic, you find your essay, uh, and so it's going to be really important that you document that properly. Now, normally, EndNote's a little complicated to teach the first time around. And what I would normally do is I would show you how to do it on the projector here in my classroom. And then you would do it, and I'd be here to help you out moving around the classroom answering questions. Unfortunately, because of the hybrid method that we're using right now, uh, I can't see you in class while you're working on this. So I'll show you. We'll make it a video. Remember, videos are, are, are especially helpful because you can slow them down, you can pause them, and you can drag that little slider bar and scrub back to repeat a part uh, that didn't make sense to you the first time around. When we're finished, if you want to use EndNote, normally I require EndNote because I want you to learn this, but because of the difficulty we're in right now, uh, if you feel more comfortable using Noodle Tools, I'm going to let you continue to use what you're comfortable with. All right, as long as your documentation is correct and in MLA format. Now, if you use some other tool and get the documentation wrong, that's not good because we must have it right and we must have it in LA, MLA format. Can't say that. All right, so let me show you how this works. I'm gonna be driving my, my computer here and clicking my mouse as we go. So, so I've got an MLA style heading, my name, teacher's name, of course, I'm the student right now, but uh, if I were the student, I'd be John Q. student and, and the teacher's Mr. Hefner. The course that I'm in and the date, it's all double spaced. It's at the left. In the upper right, you're going to do a header. If it's more than one page, you don't have to worry about it if you have a one page essay, but it's gonna be the last name. So John Q. student's last name is student. And then set this up so it does the page number automatically. So every page will be updated. Title of the essay that you're writing, and your essay. Now to keep this generic, I've used just filler text here, but let's say this is the essay that I've written and I've got a couple things that I need to document. So here's your first on your own kind of essay. It's introduction to EndNote is what I called it because the topic can be anything that you want. Make sure that you read the instructions. Much of this explains what I've already said about EndNote. 
steps to follow, you're gonna find a good source article. Now, here's the catch, right? I want you to find a good source article. You may not just go to any old web page and pull off an opinion, right? So your sources have to come from one of the databases that we have. So you could go to EBSCO, use any of the databases that are in there. You could go to Gale Resources, use any of those. What I'm gonna recommend right now, and I'll show you how to get there in a second, I would recommend in Gale, there is a, a database called Opposing Viewpoints. And I like this one because you can search by topic. There are articles that have appeared in magazines and newspapers and professional journals, but for every topic, you have them on both sides of an issue. And so you can find one that you wanna to respond to. Now, remember when you respond, you don't have to pick one that you agree with. You can pick one that you agree with and then agree, but with a difference. You could pick one that you disagree with and you could disagree and explain why, or you could find one on the topic and you could agree with some parts and disagree with others. Those are our three yes, no, okay, but responses for paragraph two, you'll remember that, right? But I like using the opposing viewpoints because it makes it easier to find that naysayer. If you're not sure who would say something against your point, uh, right there it is. And you can document that as well. All right, so you're gonna use, uh, you're gonna use our databases to find your source essay. And then you're going to use EndNote, hopefully, to document your sources as you write your paper. So that's all explained on here. Uh, here's your rubric for today. Again, always make sure that you do this correctly. Now today, you're getting 20 points out of 40 points for citing your sources. I want in-text references. Now it says here, all works are cited in text using MLA style parenthetical references. For today, that's what we're gonna do. In reality, when you cite something like I've shown you for an essay, when you say, you know, in, in this article by this author, then you don't need to because you've already in the text, you've already said who the author is and that'll correspond with your work cited page, right? You use the parenthetical references when you don't always name the source. Today, we're just gonna do it both ways to make sure you've got this. And then we'll start giving you the choice of which way you wanna do it later on. And then we're gonna add a, a works cited, uh, it doesn't have to be a separate page for us, but at the end of your essay, I want you to have all works cited listed. You must have at least one. So your source must be there. If you've found a really good naysayer, then you're gonna have at least two your source and your naysayer. All right, and other than that, you're doing everything we've done so far. Paragraph one, summarize the source essay, include a, a direct quote, be fair. Paragraph two, start with a yes, no, okay, but transition. This should be the biggest paragraph in your essay because this is why you're writing to get your ideas out there. Paragraph three, use a naysayer transition sentence, introduce that naysayer, and then quickly kind of like deal with it, right? And then paragraph four is your conclusion, but we don't want a summary conclusion. We want a uh, so what or a who cares type. And on your list of, uh, uh, on your list of transitions, you can pick a transition uh, sentence template to get to that last paragraph. So that is the assignment. Now, let's just say I need a source. So I would go to Schoology I'll click on the uh, Conrad Weiser LMC, CWLMC, which is our library media center. You can then uh, come into resources. You'll notice I'm already on resources here. And you can come up here and click Mac and log into all databases. This is something that was new last spring, but teachers probably didn't show it to you because by the time we got this, uh, it was March 13th and we had gone remote at that point. But if you click on Mac and log into all databases, uh, it'll use something called Clever and it'll automatically log you in. So you don't need to worry about all those passwords and things like that that we used to have. And all of our databases are going to show up here. Now I found that when I first came in here, it was only showing me the first 15 and I had to click load more. But the one that I wanted is this one right here. This is called Opposing Viewpoints and it's from Gale. And I'm gonna click open now. And we are going to get Gale to open up right here. 
All right, so now we've got Gale open here and I can, I'm just gonna, uh, let me see, I'll pick a topic that's already here. So let's say I wanna do something with uh, society and culture. Let's do workplace diversity. It's, it's big in the news right now. And right down here, we've got already, we've got featured viewpoints. So these are generally ones that have been published in well-known sources. So I'm just gonna take the first one. This is by John Rogers Jr. of the Washington Post. And I can click here and I get my article right here. I can read that article. I can pull the parts that I want. Now, the really cool part is going to happen when I want to uh, start to document this because Gale will automatically send the information that I need uh, to EndNote. Now, what's EndNote? I'm gonna stop sharing here because I got to jump over to EndNote now and then I will come back. Now, when you're looking for EndNote, if it's the first time you've used it, you're gonna click on the little magnifying glass uh, in your files and you can type EndNote as one word and it will come up and it'll ask you to register. It will ask you to uh, where you wanna save your EndNote library. Automatically, it's going to save to my documents. The problem that creates is when you're in school, my documents is on the school server. When you go home, you don't have access to that server anymore. So I would suggest instead of saving my EndNote library in my documents, save it on your desktop. If it's on your desktop, you should still have access to it when you get home. An even better way to do it is when you're in school, use a flash drive and save it to that flash drive so you'll have that in school or at home. Now, when you open EndNote, it's probably going to give you this little pop-up and ask, would you like to update? The problem is you don't have installation privileges. If you click yes, you're gonna wait while it downloads the update. And then when it goes to install, it's going to suddenly tell you that you don't have those privileges. And so once EndNote is open, this is what it looks like. Now for you, if it's the first time you're using EndNote, there's going to be nothing in this big window right here in the middle. Those are all sources that I've added over time. You can delete them if you want. I like to keep my research once I have things. You can also over here where it says my groups on the left, you can create a group for each research project that you're doing. If you wanna stay super organized, you can, instead of this giant window where everything appears alphabetically, you could put things into a fold. I call them folders, EndNote calls them groups. I have no idea why they had to call it groups instead of folders. Um, but what's gonna happen is once I pick something from one of my databases and I choose to add it to my EndNote library, it's going to show up right here. And it's going to be in here by author's name and title and where it was published and the date and all the publishing information is going to be there for me, all right? And so here we have uh, the, the information that I had found, right? This is the article that I had here. And when I'm ready to send that to EndNote, all I have to do is scroll to the bottom. Here's my source citation. And I'm going to pick right down here, one of these sources. So if you're using Noodle Tools, keep using Noodle Tools if you're comfortable. I'm okay with that now. Um, but if you'd like to try EndNote, what you're going to do with EndNote is you're going to click download RIS, all right? And the first time you do this, it says open with notepad. That's not going to work, okay? Uh, you could try to choose open with EndNote, and here it is, and that will work. If you've never used EndNote for this purpose, you might have to choose save file and then open the file and it'll say, what program would you like to use? And you can choose EndNote. But if you, if you have used it before, click open with, pick EndNote and say other. And now watch what happens when I say open with EndNote. All right, so here we are back with the essay that I've written. And it, let's say this first sentence needs to be cited. I'm going to click right there where I wanna put the in-text reference. I'm gonna put a period, uh, I'm, I, a space in there before the period. And this is where it gets really cool. You have a tab in Word up here that says EndNote. If I click that tab, I can come over here and I can say, I want to uh, insert a reference, but it's, it's offering the insert something called annotated. I have to change that to MLA. 
and you notice MLA is not here right now. So I have to click select another style. Now I'm going to get all 1000 of the different styles that are possible with EndNote. I'm going to scroll down about halfway till I get to the M's and we have M, 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 Let's see, where'd it go? MLA, right there, for the humanities courses. English and social studies are humanities. Art is a humanities. I'm gonna click OK. And now that it's set for MLA, I'm going to say insert citation right here. I've got to put the guy's name was Rogers. I'm gonna search Rogers. That's the one, okay? If corporations wanna stop racism, I say insert, and this is where the magic happens. Hopefully, still have an hourglass there. Now look at that. So it put my parenthetical reference right there, Rogers and Trivet. I don't have to worry about whether I did it right or not, because as long as this is set for MLA, it did it correctly. Here's the other really cool thing. If I scroll to the end of my paper, the end of my essay, I see that it already put my work cited here. Now, the one thing I have to do, I have to type work cited, Right, and I have to center that. And I could put it on its own page, but I'm not going to. And the last thing to be officially correct is I should make sure it's the same font as everything else. So that means that I've got to change it to Courier New. It's got to be size 12 so it matches. And it's got to be double space, just like everything else. So it gets the information correct, but it doesn't get the formatting right. Now, what's really especially uh, cool is if I added more sources, it would automatically add them down here. And regardless of the order I add them in the paper, it will keep them alphabetically organized here, right? So what's the advantage to using EndNote? Number one, it's super easy once you learn how to use it. Number two, it's going to be correct. As long as you remember to change it from annotated to MLA, it's going to be the correct format. What's a, what's a drawback to using uh, EndNote? Well, one of the drawbacks is you have to use Word. Because it has this, this tab up here for EndNote 9, uh, it will not work. EndNote does not work yet with Google Docs. Other than that, it's a great way to document your sources. So your goal with today's essay, once again, find your own source, find it from a good database. No cheesy websites, right? We don't want any crazy, crazy groups out there, you know, arguing that, you know, aliens came here and, you know, tried to poison us 20 years ago or something like that. Uh, it's got to be reputable. It's an academic setting, all right? Uh, document it correctly. And other than the essay writing, you know what to do. You know what to do in paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, and paragraph four. Now, if you have questions and you're not in school to be able to do this, uh, feel free to send me a Schoology message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All right, so I wish you luck. I hope you'll be able to do this. This is not the way to teach this. It was way too difficult trying to go back and forth between screen sharing. Uh, you know, I had to screen share the paper we're writing, the databases we're accessing, and EndNote. And unfortunately, a Zoom doesn't allow you to just switch from one to another. You have to stop sharing, then go back and start sharing. So as long as you have MLA, formatting and you've correctly documented both your source and your naysayer uh, and it's in MLA format, you're going to be okay. I'll see you guys later. <laughs>